What is good, Neo family? It's Ray J back with another video. And in this one, I want to break down what's happening with Neo, Tesla Spy, and a couple of other tickers. I'm going to break down some big data coming out for Neo's registrations and what this means for the next quarter coming up. Not to mention some big data involving the overall market. But before I break the entire information, before I talk about Neo's stock, let me just mention a couple of things. Firstly, I am not a financial planner, so take nothing I say as financial advice. And also, if you guys can, please check out the Weeble link, which is down below and in the description. If you sign up for Weeble and deposit $500, you are guaranteed 20 free stocks. And the offer ends very soon, in just about uh, five days from now. It's been extended until the end of June. Anyways, for NEO, we're just range bound right now. If you look at the last two and a half weeks, NEO has been stuck between 4.5 and 4.25, just going back and forth and back and forth. And we're most likely going to continue to do this until we get our deliveries numbers. So it's still kind of range bound. Going into NEO's numbers, I'm just going to start off with this. I just wanted to say that right now, we got the registrations for the third week of June, from June 17th to June 23rd, also known as week 25 for the year. And NEO did about 4,700 new registrations, which is not bad whatsoever. I'm going to actually go down to the part where it talks about NEO. Um, we're seeing some increases for NEO, Tesla, and the others. NEO did about 4,700 vehicles for their sales. That's an increase of 38.24% from the 3,400 we saw last week. That's also a nice rise of about 176% from what we saw last year. So for the first three weeks of June, NEO has 11,600 vehicles registered. Now, keep in mind, they're expecting to sell between 18,000 and 20,000 vehicles for the year to meet their targets. So we'll see if they end up you know, breaking their all-time high record for deliveries and they end up absolutely crushing it. To get there, we need to see at least 7,000 sales for the last week of June. So the last seven days, they got to do it, like, you know, absolutely push it. Generally, what happens during the last um, you know, week of the quarter, we do tend to see sales increase like crazy with lots of deals and lots of things like that. So hopefully we get some good looking numbers and we'll see how it ends up going for there. Uh, we want to see that Neo uh, ends up continuing to do very, very well. Their ET5 is also, once again, one of their best selling models, which is absolutely crushing it. And we're seeing some nice growth. So let's see how it goes. Let's hope we get a very, very strong final week. They need to really push to, re to reach those targets. That's what's going to help the share price. Now for Wednesday, don't forget that tomorrow is going to be Wednesday, June 26th. We have new home sales coming out at 10 o'clock a.m. And besides that, everything else is going to be very, very minor. There's nothing else that's too crazy that's coming out. At 11.30 a.m., we have the bill auctions coming out. Not to mention the two-year notes auction. So that's going to be kind of important, and we'll see what that leads to. Going into Thursday, that's when we have the GDP numbers and such, but nothing else is like too crazy. Now, also some more news. We have the fear and greed index currently at fear. Fear is what's driving the market this far, and that's going to be very important. Momentum is also extremely greedy as we're starting to see more buyers stepping in, still holding the market well above its 125 daily moving average. The market's on a strong uptrend so far, but just note that fear is where the motions lie as the market's at these high levels. On top of all of this, the puts and call option positioning is currently at extreme greed. This is because we're still seeing some puts being closed and more buyers stepping in. There's still some calls basically dominating the market overall that's why the ratio is still decreasing volatility is still neutral as the vix is still it's actually kind of dipping a bit as the buyers are stepping in and defending the markets so i'll break down more information about this later on for neo there's been some talk that neo released this 2023 esg report sharing its achievements of sustainable development in terms of a blue sky superior products and sustainable value change so very very good stuff for neo I think it's very important to keep their vision in tune. To have this, it's very, very important for the company and it's going to help improve things, at least for the longer term. On top of this, we're expecting you to hit their Q2 delivery target after a record 20, uh, 20.5 thousand, excuse me, vehicles sold in May. So it's been a nice record for them. And we'll see if they end up meeting a lot of what these analysts are expecting. So that's something else that's worth noting. Deutsche Bank analyst Wang Bin's team expects NEO's uh, the Chinese EV maker Neo to hand over 18,200 EVs this month, which is, not, which is not bad whatsoever. That would be a 68% increase. I'm seeing a lot more growth potential. Now for Neo, we have Bank of America Securities giving them a neutral rating. We also have the price price ratio dipping just a little bit. And overall, we're looking pretty good right now. Our release is now these at you know around noon. Also during the final hour of the day, that's when we tend to see more volatility. On top of this, uh, we also have 23 million being the volume. It's a little bit below average, not the worst. And overall, NEO is still holding up. So if NEO were to break 4.5, we're going to be looking for 4.75 to fill this imbalance. 
Now, if you end up losing 4.2 from Isaiah, stepping all the way down to 4, those are going to be the most important targets. In my opinion, Neo is going to most likely remain range bound, going back and forth and back and forth for now. And later on, we're going to get a break after deliveries. My gut tells me it's going to be to the upside, just like Tesla, as they both have lots of upside potential. Tesla is also starting to uptrend a bit. We could be looking for a test of 188s tomorrow, if not 190, looking a bit more bullish. Also, I just want to call out that we have a nice inverse head and shoulders and a lot of upside potential for Tesla stock, in my opinion, too. I might be looking for a nice rally as we approach the 200 area because Tesla's looking more bullish. I think that there's a nice inverse head and shoulders, and this is going to lead to more upside for the stock. For SPY, SPY has been dipping quite a bit, but after dipping and dipping and dipping, we actually got a nice balance today. It looks to me like it's going to try to fill this imbalance. So I anticipate it's going to go a little bit higher towards 546. We'll see if this breaks or not. If we do break this, watch 547 as a key resistance. We're going to be watching that. If we break through this, then yes, SPY could continue to push. If we fail to do this, we could be establishing a lower high and rejecting. <coughs> Excuse me. So 546 is going to be the next big test, at least for SPY. And we'll have to see what happens after that. If we end up losing support at 542, we're going to be looking for a big dip all the way back down to lower levels. Otherwise, it's just kind of stuck in the range it's in. So I see a little bit of a push coming before anything else. And we'll see how we end up reacting to resistance. So far, SPY looks like it could push just a little bit more. For NVIDIA, we're also trying to push. We actually close up above, above our EMAs. So I see this potentially going up to 130. We will see if NVIDIA establishes a lower high at 130 than rejects or not. But anticipate a little bit more upside. For Bitcoin... We're trying to rebound a bit and make sure you watch 62,250 as resistance. If this breaks, we'll be going back up to 63,000. If this rejects, we'll be coming back down. But overall, I am seeing some more upside potential. For Coinbase, uh, not Coinbase, the QQQ, excuse me, guys. QQQ is trying to push higher towards 480. If we break this, I'll be looking for a push all the way up towards about 482. And then if we break that, we have 484 coming next. So those are going to be your two resistance levels. If we end up failing right over there, if we end up failing to break that resistance, then we'll be looking for a move back down. I'll be watching 479 as key support, followed by 478. If that fails us, 476 is going to be our next target all the way down here. So I'll be watching these targets on the QQQ. I see some more upside potential for 480 to be tested. If that breaks, I think 482 could be coming. And we'll see if we get a rejection off that or not. But look for a bit more upside. Apple is kind of trading sideways. It's in a range between 212 and also 207. We're going to likely remain range bound. So look for a little dip tomorrow to 208, then back up. And some sideways price action. I find that to be the most likely possibility. Uh, on top of that, we also have um, just a few more, such as Coinbase. Coin is trying to push higher. I do think it's going to fill the gap to 225. So it looks more bullish to me. Amazon's holding support. If we lose 186.26, look for 185. If we hold this, we should rebound. My gut tells me it dips and then bounces is the most likely possibility. Meta is also trying to break out right here. We could be looking at not only 510 as resistance, but also this 515 area. I see some more upside potential there. For Microsoft, I think that there is more upside potential for 452. I think there's a good chance we could continue to go a little bit higher. This looks a little bit more bullish to me, so I'll be watching for that. G, uh, not GME, uh, sorry guys, Google, I'm talking about Google, not GME. Google has more upside potential for 186 plus. We're continuing to break these highs. No sign of it slowing down yet. GameStop is now trying to break out towards 25.92 in my opinion. Maybe looking for a little bounce on that. Same thing with AMC as we filled our gap. Maybe looking for 4.65 to be retested. So those are my targets, guys. I want to thank you all for listening. I want to continue to finish this video quickly. Neo looks kind of range around the market. Might push a little bit higher, but watch some key resistance to see if we end up getting a rejection or not. But now technicals have shifted to bulls trying to defend, and we might be looking for a little bit more upside, and we'll see if we get a rejection off resistance or not. But look for a little bit more upside, and we'll see how things go. Thanks for listening, guys. Have a great day, and peace out.